So this is George Lee's uh, preparing on the 18th of June to talk once again to J Sean Maguire. Uh, and uh, the topics are over quite a long range, but we're going to cover John Patterson and the sacrificial gestures that he's made. He's in the jail. There is no cause for that. And I'm going to show you why they've shut him up. Uh, on you go, Sean. Local radio and people's internet radio, and uh, this is in fact the 18th of the 6th, 2020, and um, it will be going out on my show on Wednesday, the 24th of June. And I'm just a bit to have back with me, inviting back onto out of the bag, uh, Professor George Lees, who was, of course, University Chair at uh, Otago University in New Zealand and Sunday University in the UK. He was also a researcher at Imperial College Hospital St. Mary's in Paddington. And uh, I'm hoping that this interview will continue from all the earlier interviews we've had. George, welcome to Out of the Bag again. Thanks, Sean. Uh, it's <laughs> absolutely amazing how much there still is left untold. It's a fabulously uh, monumental uh, mafia operation right through world history. And it's as bad now as it has ever been. All of the politicians are just Muppets. Uh, and let me start with a, quite a sensational one. I think you know already, my favourite movie is El Cid. Okay. So, it, and the, there's the title, it started in Naples. That is where the Bible was written, yeah, by the Pizzo family. Uh, and Sophia Loren, who was El Cid's lover in the movie, she, she, she is. You'd better sit down. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She is the uh, niece of President Mussolini in Italy. Wow. <laughs> so that's why it started in Naples, and that is where Sophia Loren, the most beautiful actress in world history, uh, started her career. She. <laughs> She is, and all of it, the film stars, uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, there's another stunner from Naples, but I cannot yet see it. I cannot find it in all the data I've got on display. What, another Sophia Yeah, the, no, there's another shocking uh, superstar that's <laughs> revealed in the same block of information. I've told you about Shania Twain and her husband, Matlan. Uh, he's a god from Egypt. Uh, sorry, he's a king of Egypt, descended from the kings. And when they pass on, they become, through their mummies, they become the gods in Egypt. And there is Shania. Yeah. <laughs> it is really hilarious, and that is why... She prances around on the white horses and things, but we better not get sectarian religion into this, even although it's the pyramids of Egypt, and you understand that totally now. Yeah, I think we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the pictures of Mutt, uh, and that in the cartoons out of Hollywood was Mutt, the little dog. You remember when they and took... They and yeah, that's right, and all of it is the cover for the assassination of one of George W. Bush's family in the law courts in America in the early founding fathers, uh, sorry, uh, in the lead up to their war crimes and all the inquests. That's why all those cartoon characters were made to cover their sins. Right, okay. Uh, <laughs> so Shania is, she's a massive profiteer in New Zealand where I used to live. She was gifted vast tracts of riding land because she, as one of those goddesses, uh, believes that she's uh, capable of riding Piso's horses and that is the cavalry that killed every pagan in India, uh, in America and in every other nation. That is the massive uh, pagan cull uh, that still goes on in the Holy Lands to this very day 
but I'll tell you later on that Arius Piso's families are still alive. They are the heads of the militias in the Iraqi wars and all of the things that come out of Palestine now, and that is the fake concept that the Rothschilds are Jews because they are out of Ukraine, and all of it is a massive mafia op. Uh, and uh, let me now show you what John Patterson has been jailed for. Yes, I, I'd really like to know that. Yeah. yeah, so we talked about it in brief though in the last couple of interviews, but he's now, I've discovered, you know how methodical he was, and when I talked to him on new topics, expecting him just to not to know anything about it, he always had insight so he is contributing to the Internet Archive uh, and he has published a one hour long video telling the whole world what Greg Hallett wrote on uh, <laughs> the... Let me see what the title is. Uh, sorry, I've got uh, dozens of sites open at the same time. No worries. Uh, so John, John's in, in a, a mental ward, isn't he? In Pine Ward in Chichester or somewhere. Yeah, Andy Devine told me where it was, but I can't remember. Uh, he's, his, have you heard of the Internet Archive? I have, yeah, the Wayback Machine. Yeah, that's it. So John has been a full member of it. And when I first looked this morning, he has dozens of posts on it. When I looked at lunchtime, he's only got one left. Yeah, that is the treason that is every organization that is run by Rothschild right around the whole world. So let me get the story. I cannot find the story. of. Yeah, it's somewhere on... Can I, can I just tell you, I, I was given some information and um, he was due to be in court last Wednesday, I think, and uh, I don't know whether he's still in court. I don't know the results of that. But what I've been told that John Patterson is in Pine Ward, the Chichester Centre, Graylingwell Drive, Chichester, PO 196GS. And that's in England, of course. So that is Plymouth. Plymouth. No, Chichester. I thought Francis Chichester sailed from the island. He might have been, but Chichester is not Plymouth. It's All right. Yeah. Um, anyway, he's in Chichester. There is a number of people who are interested in phoning and finding out what's happened to John, um, or even to give um, the facts that he's not due Larry, that his, his facts are in fact true about Finchley Road and all the rest of it. Um, so it's 0044 1243 or the very same number 0044 1243 They're the two numbers. But why does everybody um, keep referring to. Uh, the, the road and the financial money laundering that is not even worth uh, one minute of Rothschild's income. It, that is, what, what was the Finchley Road? Yeah, the boiler rooms that Gordon Bowden was talking about. But, I mean, if... The, if they're if, relatively if trivial. Like, if, well, it's like, it's like the bottom up and the top down, uh, George. If they expose that and it's true and they end up being taken to court because they have boiler rooms, that would absolutely so the stuff that they've removed from the the stuff that they've removed within the last hour from the internet access globally is on Adolf Hitler and how he became much more popular than any other German politician because he was at war like me with the Rothschilds. Yeah, yeah, that is the. That is the anti-Semitism, the killing of all of the Jews, yeah, and all of it is the uh, the uh, the uh, battery for that global campaign that has meant that they are now the emperors of the entire world, uh, and they're still totally crooked. There's the pictures of him. There's Lord Jacob and his wife. Uh, she's Serena. Uh, Rothschild, and no one can know whether she's alive or dead. Yeah, they now tell you that nobody goes to their funerals anymore, and there is young Nathan marrying the Bassett woman, Loretta Bassey. 
she descends from the Assyrian families that are the basis of the writing of the Bible. <laughs> that in the comedies and everything that John understood about Billy Bass and the uh, the comedies were, uh, I can't remember what it was, but that that is uh, Shirley Bassey, who's picked to be a Bond singer. She sang some of the 007 uh, movie clips. She did. She sang Goldfinger. That's it. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, so the joke there is that Billy Bass, the comedian that was in Bootsy and Snudge, you remember that? I yeah. Do, yeah. <laughs> they are the ancient characters that are the leaders in the Holy Lands that have never been owned by Rothschild because they came from Eastern Europe and Ukraine. Okay. Uh, but then that is Lord Jacob Scam, uh, and he's been in power. Uh, ever since he killed his own brother. Not many people know that. Uh, and uh, that is one of the world's biggest secrets, and which is why we may not make uh, any more videos once this one has been published. <laughs> uh, well, do you, know, do you know what? I just wanted to remind you and tell all my listeners as well, I think this is the 20th interview that myself and you have done now, they've not all been two hours, some of them have been an hour long or etc. But we have now, this is the 20th interview we're doing together, or at least the 19th. Yeah, it's magic, and uh, because you've got such a, a good memory, uh, we. I don't know about that. <laughs> it's, it means that we don't have to keep sharing the same facts again and again and again. Uh, and it's quite stunning. This week, we've I've had a visit uh, in Dundee. There's a woman uh, that has visited us called Hamilton, and she's Hamilton of, uh, of I forget what the name of the estate is, but it's, it's up near where, uh, where, what was the man that parachuted into Britain to try and end the war prematurely? Oh, God, I don't know what his name was. Uh, Hess. The Hesses. Oh. Hesses of Hamilton, uh, and he spent the rest of his life in jail. The Hamiltons are now, uh, they're the wives of Gerald Grosvenor, Britain's richest man. He's not dead, take my word for it. All of them are now training their children. He's only got one male child, and that is perilously dangerous, because guess who his godfathers are? Go on. The Windsor family. Yeah, it's not a coincidence, I believe. And there is beautiful Loretta Basie to wed Nat Natty Rothschild. Uh, and there are the people that are in their photos. What was the name of the ones that were in the museum comedy? Oh, it's, it's So that's... Uh, that is Gervais. Oh, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, and there's the other one. I can't remember what his name was, but he Steve was... Dr Merchant, is it? Uh, he's a weedy little man, yes. uh, but oh. I, I can't remember the name. The thin tall man, Steve Merchant? No. Uh, no, not him. Okay. It, I don't know that. He's also, he was in the, uh, the comedy that is Gavin and Stacey. Oh, I didn't watch that at all, so I didn't. He's, he's Welsh, I think, and uh, everything that he's appeared oh, in... Byron or Brian. No, I can't imagine. If you saw the pictures, it would instantly ring a bell. Well, so, sorry, I haven't got that facility. Um, is it, was it Bill Bryson? But she, she, she's... He's in the photos with Loretta Bassi, uh, and he may have been the ex-husband. Because remember that Natty Rothschild's first wife is alleged to have suicided. And I used to see her drinking all the time after that had been declared in the Dundee Witherspoons, where you were actually allowed to take uh, movie clips uh, and photos. like They're called selfies for the ordinary people. But as soon as they found that they were making our potent videos, 
uh, and showing Adolf Hitler drinking in Witherspoons, uh, they then they then banned the use of a camera in that place. Even although I told one of the waiters behind the bar, who, where my son used to work, uh, in the same pub, uh, that he was descended from one of the British royals that was uh, uh, in the lineage of George the Sixth, that was the stammering king, and he was really excited by that, and he's the only one that did not get. <laughs> that did not say that I was not able to make videos in that place. Uh, and Ricky Gervais, remember, he is Richard Gervais, is the owner of Witherspoons. Yeah, we made videos at that time. It was all, so, so Richard Beckett Gervais, and that is the Becketts that were executed in the uh, uh, religious schisms uh, way back when Winchester Cathedral was created. Wow. It, and I think they actually murdered uh, the Beckett at that time. That is the Plantagenet families, and it, they are absolutely lethal. Uh, Lord Jacob Rothschild's quite a nice guy compared to them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so, and that is Serena Dunn, uh, and that is the naming of Serena Williams, uh, and everything that is at Wimbledon is a cover-up for the world's most lethal people. So it's that is... Quite crazy. It's quite crazy for people to listen to this, George, because why would they go to such an elaborate setup and an act and all the rest of it to, to, to make all these you know, uh, families all connected? Surely Wimbledon is, is people who are good at tennis, who aspire at good tennis, and they end up competing uh, in other tournaments, getting getting uh, uh, through to play at Wimbledon and, and playing at Wimbledon every time. I mean, surely it's not all a complete scam. Well, I used to work in the hospital right next to Wimbledon, uh, and it's massively popular. Uh, and the, the it's part of the New World Order's uh, games. So the cockfighting, uh, real tennis, and badminton. And what is the one where you, if you get the ball in your eye, it'll blind you? Like a little, it's a cubic... Uh, arena and you have to hit the ball against the wall squash. yeah squash so I remember you uh, we got to play that as poor people at Herrick Watt University but those are all the when they knocked over the palace and replaced it with Westminster that became the royal play zone for all of those games and even the cockfighting and uh, I can't remember uh, Greyhound racing is very popular amongst them. I still do not quite understand why the greyhounds are... They, they are part of the humans becoming the gods uh, belly laugh for all these families. So so the master, the master of the horse is a man called Vesti, and those are the Vestis of Argentina. Uh, Lord Vesti in England that runs all the butchers. Yeah, that's right. So they were butchers. They went to Argentina in World War One. They came back as millionaires and they got all the tax breaks that makes them billionaires now. Yeah. Uh, I've never met them, but they actually attend, because I'm a, close to their massive estates on the Cheviot Hills, they attend the point-to-point -point races, which are for the relatively poor people locally, uh, but they still take place. Uh, and if you get a can of lager at those meetings, it's all like contraband and they're past the sell-by date, but it's only it's only 80 pence to a quid <laughs> for a tin of cider. Uh, uh, so... looking after each other, I suppose. Well, it's it's all the same aristocratic families, and and you know how well I understand the linkages to them uh, but I still cannot get at Potsdamer Place they have statues of the greyhounds and things and they show you pictures of them dragging people around the pavements uh, and uh, I know in Berwick when I lived in Berwick the neighbours were the agents for Rothschild 
and they used to take 12 or 15 dogs all in the lead, pulling them along. And that is just the, the joke that God is dog backwards if you're reading it as a Hebrew person. Yeah. <laughs> but where's the Potsdamer place? It's, it's in uh, Vienna. Okay. And that is the massive empire uh, for the families that were Frederick the Great. And that, all of that is in the Mozart movie. That is where he plays them the concert. And uh, Frederick the Great proclaims to him that his daughter is uh, Marie Antoinette in a place called Paris. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the massive wars all across Europe. And the motive for all of them is religion. And Lord Jacob Rothschild looks like a nice person, but his religions are nothing to do uh, with the Holy Lands, but that is the battles in the Holy Lands, and that is the name of God that is gold, oil, and diamonds. That is the motive for the Iraq War, or the invasion of Afghanistan, and the takeover of all those lands that still had their own uh, federal banks, the rest of them. The amount of opium fields that are being protected by uh, American soldiers and UN soldiers. And you know now who the boss at the drug lineage is. Go on. Uh, Richard Branson is the drug czar for the world. Yeah. And, and how is that? Is that you can get through customs easier than anyone else? What, what is the reason? All of it is they all get trained at Tavistock and places like that, and then they're given their mission statements. And because they've got the gift of the gab like you and me, but they can deliver it in BBC English, uh, that, that allows them to train in the post. Uh, and uh, his body double used to come in uh, when I was living in uh, the Travel Lodge Hotel in uh, Dundee. His body double... Uh, used to come in and chat to me in the uh, reception area and it was the same, Rabsi Nisbet actually showed up there several times he's on the world owning bloodline and the whole of that hotel was run by the BBC operatives well, Richard, Branson, <laughs> Richard Branson and Rabsi Nisbet met you in the travel lounge? Yeah, in the lift and you should have seen uh, Rabsi Nisbet when he escaped he's kind of panicky uh, but he's a local person in the Scottish borders. It was him that told me that. I met him in New Zealand at the airport in Dunedin. Uh, and and he, when he heard me speaking to my students, he said, you're through the borders. And he sounded exactly like me. And I said, how do you, Ken? You're from uh, either Aberdeen or from Glesky. Uh, and he said, no, no, no. I was born and raised in Langham. Uh, and that is on the Scottish border, halfway between Carlisle and Hoyk. And that is where uh, they were taking uh, the true King of England, who was born in Carlisle Castle. And that is the only legitimate son of Queen Victoria. And that is the work of Greg Harlett, who I was going to let you listen to, because he's been revived by our Mutual friend, John Patterson. Yeah. Okay, Greg Hallett has been revived by John. Yeah, so what John has done in his careful way is anything that he thinks is a movie clip that is of geopolitical importance, he's prepared, like me, to archive it. In my case, it's on my website. In his case, it's on the Internet Archive. When they knew that I was planning to show the books that show that Hitler is a much nicer person than the ruthless Rothschilds, who already owned Germany at that time, they then took all of those publications by John, which had been republished and replayed on that website. It's called the Internet Archive. You will never, ever see the Hitler uh, stories again. They're not even on the archive. They, they, were, they were at 10 o'clock this morning, Right. But now they're off it. 
<laughs> it's not interesting. It's just because we planned yesterday. Uh, I, I, had, I had not found the Internet Archive that John Patterson created. But let me see if I can find it now and read it to you. Yes. Uh, It's just that I've got so many sites open that it's going to be quite tedious. So there is... I'm sure my listeners will be happy when you get it. And in the meantime, I suppose there's got to be a time in which you were live and people can actually ask questions. That'd be quite good. Well, that was how it was when we first started at the beginning of those... What did you say? 40, 40 videos? No, no, 20. All right. This, this will be the 20th. You, you, like Field McConnell, used to have a chat room so that they could make live comments or ask questions live. I, I, I have people's internet radio chat room here, yes. Yeah. Oh, I thought that had be, was a thing of the past. No, no, I've still got it. Yeah. All right. People's internet radio, uh, kindly Stephen from Cancer the Cabal. Super big bad man, they call him. Uh, he's uh, kindly been restreaming my shows on people's internet radio as well as even on. Did you find it, George? I'm still looking. Sorry, it's. Uh, I should have taken more time to get it to get ready. Mm. Uh, Well, I suppose I, I'll, I'll mention again for people that want to help out John Patterson or know him and, and, and want to get in contact with him. Uh, I suppose if you want to write to him, it would be uh, John Patterson, the Pine Ward, uh, the Chichester Centre, Graylingwell Drive, Chichester, PO196GS. So that's in England, of course. And there is a phone number 0044, which I presume is the British um, dialing code. So, um, if you're in England, it's 01243 791919 or 01243 791920. How are you getting on, George? Uh, I think I found the page that it's on now. Good man. Uh, but I cannot quite. The picture of you is above the last. You can minimise me completely if you wish. Get me out of the way. So there's the Hamiltons of Abercorn. Okay. Can you guess who their nieces are? In the religious videos that we've made in the last couple of years? No, go on, you'll have to tell me. That is Lloyd Pack's family. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that is uh, Mrs. Thatcher's chancellor who mm -hmm. sent us to war in Argentina. And if you keep looking at the sisters of that family, uh, the beautiful woman that came uh, into Coldstream the other day, she's not nearly as beautiful as her sister that is Natalia Grovna. Okay. Yeah, that is the richest woman in Great Britain because of her husband's legacy. Husband's yeah. But, and you say he's... Uh, well, I believe he is. In Dundee, he was, uh, my mate Ken, he spent the whole of his time gambling uh, and he owned the casino and he used to tell me that it would be there and I could go there at any time in the evening or in the morning hours. It never shut. Right. And he's got two casinos in uh, Newcastle and I spent six months in Newcastle at the same time and that nearly crippled me financially because you don't have bus passes in England. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> so there yeah, is there is the fifth Duke of Abercorn. Uh, Alan Warren is the person that's taken the the picture. He's the Chancellor of the Order of the Garter, which goes right back into. Uh, Edward de Longshanks was Edward the First. Edward the Third was his grand, great grandson, and he's the ones that were gonna get executed because they were 
the, they were the poofy generation, uh, and the woman that was uh, Braveheart's would-be lover after they had actually killed the Braveheart's wife uh, was Princess Isabella, and she was married to them, and she was spirited enough to get rid of them. Only Longshank sired babies because of his sexual tendencies. The others were gay, and they killed the third one uh, <laughs> with a red-hot poker up his anus. Oh, lovely. Like you do. So, so that is the order of the garter and everything that is the British royals even today. I don't know if they take pokers with them, but you know their sexual reputation uh, and that is the need for uh, giving them Rothschild uh, people so that they can have their babies in secret, change their name back to Windsor and that is the massive breach of the UK constitution and all of the moral rules of marriage. Absolutely, yeah. keeping the bloodlines going, basically, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. It's about the wealth being kept in the family, and that is why, that is why when Gerald Grosvenor realised that he had only one male son, eh, the godfather for that one was the Windsors. Yeah. <laughs> so that is... Eh, uh, and these are the Crichton families. So Edward Hamilton was the fourth Duke of uh, Abercorn. Kathleen Crichton, he is a former politician and Lord Steward of the Royal Household. Uh, but let me see if I can find the woman that visited the other day. Uh, so there's the Duchess of Abercorn. Uh, and it's and this is a spirited doyen of Northern Irish life. She must have an estate in Ulster. Oh no, the Telegraph will not let me see the pictures. You have to oh. jo join them and pay a subscription. Oh, yeah, of course you do. <laughs> uh, let me show you. This. So there she is, uh, standing with her husband, who's the fourth Duke of Abercorn, uh, and I think. I think that Mrs. Thatcher's private secretary was Archie Hamilton, and he's the one that took us to Argentina. And her grandpa is uh, Pedro of Argentina, Hamilton. Um, yeah, and there, there she is, standing next to a Nazi that we talk about in nearly every video. He's the founder of the DVD Deutsch organization. Can you remember? Oh, go on, tell me. A man called Prince Philippe. <laughs> 99 years old now, eh, and they've not allowed him to have a 100-year birthday because that is the code number for Piso. And I, eh, that might be too much for the gods eh, not to be tempted to eh, pass him on. Yeah, do you think so? You don't think he'll reach the, the, the magic hundred? I, I think yeah, they've yeah. actually postponed his birth date just in case. <laughs> <laughs> so that is amazing. That is Hamilton, and that is where Hess of Hamilton, Abercorn, I think, is in Fife, but do not quote me or take bets on that. Okay. But she's, the title is The Duchess of Abercorn, and she, you can see, that she is already a likeness for Emily Lloyd Park. And then all of a sudden, when you find the family tree, all of that is confirmed. And that is the comedies for Del Boy, using the pyramidal yellow carb that he used to have. Okay. You remember it? I do, the only fools and horses. And yeah, that's it. it. So it's, it's he... Trotter's trading, um, it was a reliant Robin, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. And it was a three-cornered, three-wheeled car. Three-wheeled, yeah. Yeah, for the master racers of ancient Egypt. And remember that that is President, uh, President Mubarak. His real name, uh, sorry, uh, and that is Shakira and all the scams that mean that my videos on the songs that Shakira makes... Uh, have never been allowed to be published because it is telling you 
the story of ancient religion, uh, and that is the mountain from the molehill joke, uh, and that's why she, Shakira, uh, walks on her, she gets down on her knees and walks like a horse with the four limbs in the mud, and that is them telling you that in the ancient days that there were mud volcanoes all over the world. Uh, and that, you remember you were interested in the castle in Portugal where all of the murders took place? Yes. yes. Uh, that was Sintra Abbey, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is, the, that is the royals in Britain in the form of Edward VII getting rid of the rivals because Edward VII uh, was the Edwardian person that replaced uh, the true King of England that was sired in Carlisle Castle uh, and then went to live on the Isle of Wight and that is where Peter Sellers was then sent to make the Being There movie to show the whole of the life of that man uh, for the Freemasons Remember that when the Freemasons have a world secret, they tend to use numerical codes or pictorial images to let it out into the lodge. Yes. So what they did there was when Peter Sellers got to New York and was talking to all the aristocratic people and the presidents, he, in his leisure time, went to a baseball game and the true date of birth was on the scoreboard for the baseball game uh, and that was all told us by the late Greg Hallett. And I wish I could find his contributions or... Uh, so there's Lady Hamilton of Abercorn and there is Emily Lloyd Pack. And you can see the likeness in every photo but she's now <laughs> absolutely rabid uh, and that is, that is her husband that was in the comedies with Del, Del Boy. Uh, nope. uh, no, her dad. Yeah, can you remember him? But the, her dad was in, yes, I do. Her dad was remember. Del Boy, but I can't remember his name. Roger Lloyd Park. Yeah, he, he wasn't Del Boy, okay? Del Boy was somewhere else. No, but he was, uh, in, he was in the cast of the... He was in the cast, I do know who you mean. He also was the king of the Cybermen in Doctor Who, and he died recently. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Uh, um, but Hugh Lloyd, I think, or, I'm not quite sure. So I, I, watched, I watched loads of little movie clips of their funniest episodes the other day, and when you realise that they are related to those uh, ancient folks, so Natalia, that was married to Gerald Grosvenor, she, de she descends from the Russian Tsars. And that we've been telling that story for years and years and years. Uh, so uh, when the Rothschilds get married into the Russian Tsars, that becomes the manager at Heart of Midlothian Football Club. His business registered director name was Tsar Tsar Nikolaevich Romanov Rothschild. That is the Romanov Tsars that were shot to pieces by the Rothschilds and Marx and Engels in the massive devastation of the Russian place because the Russians knew that America had given up its democracy and the concept of issuing its own funds to the families that owned the Federal Reserve. Yeah, yeah and that's why the Tsar took a stand against it and that's why so few of them are left alive and that is Gerald Grosvenor's role in life to keep that secret. He is the boss at the British Legion, yet yeah, right through his life for profit, yeah, and the selling of the poppies. And when I published that, they started to make ceramic poppies, so they became more expensive. Yes. yes. And he's the boss at the British Legion, and the last time I saw his sister, she was drinking in the coldest Ednam House Hotel, where the escapees were were the family that is Brooks. Remember that Hannah Mary Rothschild has only been married uh, once. She, she now has uh, five children. Uh, when they divorced, they had only been married for two years. 
So and guess what the other... <laughs> okay. It doesn't quite make sense, does it? Well, that is why they have such a secret of life now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that is everything that they release. The, the first wife of Nat, Nat, Nat Rothschild, who lives in Switzerland, uh, is... Uh, she, I forget what her name was, but they, that is when I was publishing the stories that how they killed the pagans, uh, and that was their equivalent. Instead of them showing pictures of the ribs on the front page of that video, that is every pagan that was killed in the religious wars, they ripped open his back by breaking the ribs, uh, taking the lungs out the back, and that was called angel's wings. Uh, and that's why the first wife of Nat, Nat Rothschild had to wear a negligee and show her ribs to the world to try and obfuscate how the pagans were killed, yet yeah, under the oak trees or in the burning at stake. It's absolutely amazing that they can still get away with it. Uh, but that, that is their propaganda machine, is the news that is issued by the whole world with Rupert Murdoch at the top of the tree. And you should yeah, well, they, well, they control the whole of the media, the global media, so, so they can actually get away with controlling and brainwashing and propagandizing whatever they want, can't they? Uh-huh. So I'm blowed if I can find the... Well, don't worry about it, George. I'm sure you've got plenty of other things to tell us about. Uh, so, shall I go back to uh, Israel? Well, I, yes, go on back to Israel, George. Because it's quite stunning. Every movie we make now I refer to the Piso family. They are, they are the founders of the religions in Eastern Europe. Thousands of years ago, even... Genghis Khan, uh, they are all, uh, the Piso family is in that story, even although it's so far away to the east. Uh, it's <laughs> absolutely stunning. Uh, and in the armies that fought for the oil in uh, after we'd conquered Iraq, that is the British families that went there and died for their country so that the royals could take over the oil wealth. And that's not a new concept. I posted on Facebook yesterday two posts showing the Bush family. Let me see if I can find them for you. So it's it's on the front page of my, uh, my Facebook page. Okay, yeah. Uh, and it shows the Bush family that, remember, they came from Italy first. Uh, and that is why they were George Herbert Walker Bush and George Herbert Poppy Bush. That is Poppea in the Roman court that is their ancestor. And there are the photos that I published yesterday of the uh, families. That is Commodus and his son. And that is the busy bees of ancient Rome. Yeah, And they descend... To, busy bees. Yeah, you remember we talked about uh, the fabulous singers and the bloodline trees for all the university owners and leaders. That is the boss at half. Uh, 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 where was uh, Bill Clinton educated? Oh. Harvard. So, so Harvard University's boss uh, descends to the female relatives of Marcus Aurelius. Uh, and that is Faust and Faustina. Yeah, that's the busy bees of Rome, and the pictures are found. So William Stamps Farish uh, confirms that the Queen of England is a massive uh, oil stealer. That is the Farish families and the Parish families, who you may remember from the Jumanji movies. Okay. Can you remember them, the shoe factories that they ran? I remember the Jumanji movies. But yeah, so Parish was the name of the shoe factories. Farish is an oil stealer supreme. 
He was a friend of Adolf Hitler. The Olympics that were held uh, on the eve of World War II in Germany with Adolf Hitler in the audience making the, ramp, r the ranting speech, speech that uh, all of the leaders are obligated to do now. Uh, and he was sat next to Mr. Farish, who's a director on the oil companies that are run by the Queen of England. Okay. Yeah, that is used to be called Royal Dutch Shell. So that is them taking, <laughs> taking the wealth of the Dutch families, yet that had been so big a part in the mass of religious schisms across Europe. Uh, and that becomes, in the Jumanji movie, that is the Parish family that was the shoe company. Okay. Uh, and that is the, uh, I think, was, what was Jesus' dad? Was he a carpenter? He was a carpenter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all just the same parodies. Uh, and remember that uh, Telly Savalas, we've heard about some famous godfathers. Telly Savalas is the uh, godfather of uh, that woman that I tried to coerce you into allowing me to marry if you were to have Emily Lloyd Park, if anything happens to your wife. Uh, that is, is Jennifer, Aniston? Jennifer Aniston's godfather was Telly Savalas. Right, yeah, makes sense. And, and have you ever looked up the video clip? Uh, she goes to the hairdressers uh, and says to the actress that is the hairdresser in the movies, uh, the movies were called, uh, I can't remember, it was, it was absolutely hilarious, but she was in divorce proceedings, uh, and just to try and capture her husband's attention, she went and asked uh, to the hairdresser for a Telly Savalas, not knowing what it was, but her advisor had said, that's all you need to secure your marriage, and that is a vaginal shave. <laughs> yeah, that is Telly, Telly Savalas's baldy head is Jennifer Aniston's fania. <laughs> it's in... It's in a movie, she's the star, the uh, starlet, and the star is Vince Vaughn. Look it up sometime, it's absolutely hilarious. And that, that is the meaning of life since the Bible was written, because piso means vagina in translation. Yeah, that's quite incredible, isn't it? <laughs> and, and, and if you look at all the, the, I suppose, the symbolism over the years, the symbolism even of churches and all the rest of it, they're very sexual, aren't they? Based on sex. Absolutely, yeah. We talked about it a lot in the videos we've made. Yeah, the the even the commoner Kate's uh, what do you call it if you're not rowing but you're in a kayak like you you put the little pad paddle over the side and push it on. So that is also the funny. Okay, uh, canoeing. Canoeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are the pictures of the Bush family with William Stamp Farish in the secret society that is the Skull and Bones that is the direct link for America to the Queen of England to steal from the Dutch royals. Right. And that's a really dangerous thing to do. The name of their company was Zapata and that is one of the Indian leaders. Yeah, that is... Oh, that is... <laughs> Zapata Offshore Company in a place called Houston in Texas. That is the, uh, remember who the war crimes chair from Houston was uh, in the war crimes after World War II? No, that was, uh, it's the same as the Liverpool families that were Lord Oaksey. That is oh. the oak tree again, Lord Oaksey of Liverpool and for Houston, it was, uh, I can't remember, but it's all the same uh, families. Uh, and I, when they had the massive floods in Houston, that was the, rev uh, I think they were Harrison. 
Okay. Yeah, and that, that is every war crimes inquest chair is a member of the Illuminati. And there is the saddest joke. Remember you told me that I was a brave man to be a pagan worshipper? Yeah. So what they're celebrating there right next to the Zapata offshore company is that the fact that the Indians worshipped uh, the Native American sun dance. That is the, that is the pag pagan worshippers of the sun god that I now worship. And you should see the whole of the town lights up every, every time you mention it now. Uh, and that's all that needs to happen so that Christianity can re be replaced and the inspirational gods that created our world will then have more influence. Yeah, it's all, it's all just a massive fake, and that is the capacity to reincarnate your families. Uh, there it is, uh, George Bush's dad with Geronimo, and that is the uh, massive jokes that naming Geronimo, I can't remember it, uh, he was used as the skull in the Skull and Bones inaugural meeting. That is one of America's native sons that worshipped the god, uh, and that is the sun dancing ceremony in America for all of those pagans. And if you remember the uh, Good Morning America, How Are You songs that were sung uh, by... Uh, uh, I, well, there was four of them. They were called the uh, Travelers or something, and it was about getting on a train and getting from one coast of America to another on the same day, like the sun is capable of doing. <laughs> and, you, and you don't know the name of that, that band? Or oh, yeah, so, so who was... Will, will it be, so? Yeah, it was like that, but they were... Uh, Good Morning America, how are... Willie Nelson was one of the four. Yeah, I think it's the Travelling Wilburys or something like that they're called. And Bob Dylan's involved. Let, let me look it up. Uh, Willie. <clears throat> and all of them are pointing up with their finger when it's not strumming the guitar to the heavens because they know that that is their American native sons were the sun god worshippers. Uh, <laughs> I think when, when, when you um, dig deep and deep and deeper down into our histories, culturally all around the world, it seems that, you know, and it makes sense that we were all sun worshippers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, there it is up in there, up in the sky, there it is in the morning. I don't, really, don't know whether we need to worship it exactly, but it's definitely there to be uh, lauded and applauded. So there's, there's Willie singing it on his own, and it's called the City of New Orleans in that version. But okay. I forget what the group was. There were four musicians in it. Mm. Uh, well, don't worry about it. People can look it up themselves. Yeah. Uh, but that is, I'm your native son, and that is what happened to the Indians, was when they raped the women, they cut their fannies out like Jack the Ripper did, and they turned the inside of the fanny into their wallet yeah and and it is absolutely ruthless and that was the soldier blue icons and when the soldier blue movie was made remember that they got the piezo pistol that george bush uh, is delighted to be photographed with and started shooting her vagina yeah if you watch it again it is unmissable yeah, yeah. It's, it's been many, many years ago since I've seen Soldier Blue. It's a very, very old uh, film, isn't it? Yeah, it was a beautiful film, but when you saw the massacres and what happened, uh, and everybody... <laughs> I met somebody this week at the, on fishing on the River Tweed, uh, and he uh, manufactures... What was the name of the Indian tents? Wigwams. Yeah, it was. There's another teepees. teepees, teepees yeah. So he sells teepees to the tourists in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so why would <laughs> Sorry, I've gotten off the track. What were we looking for? We're looking for fucking John Patterson and his. That was ages ago. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd like to get it told because 
It's absolutely amazing that they're allowed to do that without anybody being able to come and help him and testify to what they actually do in life compared to the royal family and the ruthless Rothschilds even today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that, I mean, that is Hannah Mary. You understand that Hannah Mary Rothschild is the basis for the sex island. Right. Well, that's yeah, so her her lover is just her agent. That is Mandelson. I made a video on it that lasted 90 minutes. Mandelson comes creeping onto the beach with his dukers on, swimming trunks. Right. Yeah, and his lover in that story... Uh, that was all to cover Hannah Mary Rothschild's financial sins and the industrial military complex that is run by them in America. Uh, that is, uh, the lover of Mandelson was Ronaldo. And you understand why Ronaldo, the football player, was used? Because the best football player in the world is used in all the Rothschild scams because he's got the same name as the Rothschild brothers. That is Lionel... Messi. Yeah, Lionel Nathan Rothschild and his brother, uh, his cousin, were, were the first owners of the Bank of England. And that is how the world's news is falsified. Well, it's certainly falsified, isn't it? <laughs> the amount of lights I hear every day on the TV, not that I watch TV very often, but I do put it on. Um, the amount of bullshit that's on there is unbelievable. Well, that's, I believe that, you know, the football and everything that happens in the massive arenas is exactly the same as it was in ancient Rome. So that is the role of the Colosseum, is to in yeah. entertain. And if you watch the throwing of the Christians to the lions, mm -hmm. it brings tears to your eyes, because that is them... Uh, pretending that the Christians were the victims of the biggest steal in world history that makes everybody uh, like Madonna. She is beautiful. Her music has inspired me ever since I first heard it. Uh, but I don't know how they live with their conscience. Mm -hmm. Yet yeah, that is the <laughs> massive... Uh, so how did this scam... Well, I won't call it a scam. How is this that's going on now globally at the moment, um, the, the pan pandemic, the, the COVID-19 situation, how is, that, um, how is that planned by the elites? Have you got an insight into that side of things? Why would they do such a thing? Have they been losing power and they need to... So I think I've, I've told you before that when uh, Peter Ayer was informing me of who was on the Committee of 300, there was uh, a family called. Uh, there was a family called. Uh, Stephen Hester was uh, accused of murdering a member of the Chang family. The Chang woman was my Facebook friend, and she was a pharmacist like me. So that turns out to be the cover for the real three Changs that are the World Health Organization. That is, that is the launch of their mythology that Stephen Hester, the banker, was murdered by them. That is right side, outside the medical building in London where Netanyahu was watching out the window when they blew the bus to bits. And it had written on the side, terror, bold and brilliant. You remember that day in world history? Yeah, 7 11, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and that is Netanyahu, who we could talk about for the next hour. I'm quite tempted to do it. In the last video, I had all the information prepared and the names and things. But let me see if I can find John Patterson's contribution. Okay. Uh, you, you had the document up, you just had a look for the Yeah, I had it open before we started, but. Are over ambitious in this case. Uh, so there's the page that. Ah! Shit. What's that? 
I, I found it there, but it's... Yeah, it can't be good for the listeners just hearing this. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so there is the internet access thing. Yeah, and there is the title of the video that our mutual friend, John Alexander Patterson, has published on the internet. He was a very methodical researcher. His memory on financial issues was not good, but his memory on ancient mythology and the stories that the royals and their financiers uh, have duped us with. So the title is Hitler British was a British agent, Queen Elizabeth, Prince Philip, Rothschild, Clinton, Illuminati. Uh, and there is a picture of Jorn, who was, I believe, he's now disappeared completely from the social media. This was one of the earliest videos that he made with Greg Hallett in his beautiful studio. And on the back are Greg Hallett's 10 beautiful hardback books. And one of them is How to Take Over the World, a Right Royal Con, that has now been strategically taken out of world history. Yeah? And there is Jorn. Let me just play a little bit of it. So I'll let him speak until he goes through the titles of the books that he's already written and are ready to publish then. And that was that that this that was in 2011. Yeah. So 2011, uh, and that is uh, that is way before I used to go to. I'm living in Coldstream now, and I first heard this video in Coldstream Library. Mm, <laughs> it's amazing and that is the explain the titanic the launch of world war one the sinking of the book eh, the, the novel that describes the sinking of the titanic 10 years before the titanic was sunk and all of it is the cause of all the wars uh, and all the family inbreeding there is the book eh, that is how to take over the world a right royal con let me see if he, he's going to read the titles of the books that Greg has had decimated. Uh, Lawrence DeMello, who helped to murder him, is now selling them. Can't very well. You can't hear that very well at all. No, it's because I've uploaded it again and copied the copy, you see. Okay, well don't don't um don't worry. Maybe, maybe just tell people what's going on rather than um, trying to listen to that because that's impossible. It will, so, it will come across. The titles of his books are Hitler was a British agent, uh, Stalin uh, was a British agent, uh, and all of it is absolutely stunning. Uh, I've been reading to the citizens of Coldstream who surveil my office uh, nice. and it's absolutely amazing uh, how many of them show up when you start mentioning their names. That is mm -hmm. why that is why the Hamilton woman was in town the other day. <laughs> so Hitler and Stalin were both British agents? Yeah, and all of it is Chiang Kai-shek was too and that's why on my Facebook pages all of the photos uh, the the meeting that was in Casablanca is the launch of the movie that is uh, travelling down the Nile uh, and that is, play it again Sam, that is, that is the cover for the meeting, the massive summit during the war at Casablanca. 
with Winston Churchill in his deathly white suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, she, we should turn this off. Yeah, yeah. So let me show... That's... Hitler was a British agent. Uh, and there is by John Alexander Patterson. So what he's done is to publish on the Global Internet Archive uh, the whole of story, Hitler, British agent, Queen Elizabeth, Prince Philip, Rothschild, those are just the names. Bill Clinton is the half-brother of the Queen of England, uh, and uh, that is through Winston Churchill's semen samples and a woman called Pamela Digby Churchill, uh, and she's a beautiful woman, and she has a body double in Coldstream. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, everywhere I go, they now follow you, uh, and all of them are ultra pleasant. Even the Germans that trained in Liverpool, they're the ones that crash my bank account every now and again, hoping that I will get clinically depressed. Right. When you're working on something as important as this, that is not going to happen to a professor that has been homeless for eight or nine years. And there is Andy Coulson's body double, who's a politician in the Scottish borders. That's the whole, the whole of his life since uh, Rupert Murdoch launched his team that Coulson, with Rebecca Brooks, was the leader in the news uh, mafias. You remember Andy Coulson at the uh, Sun newspaper? Yeah, yeah. Well, all, you know, we, we now know that the, you know, the media is completely controlled by just a few families, so it's just depressing to know that so many people are being fooled and bamboozled by it on a daily basis because they buy their daily paper, their daily dose of it. So, when I looked at this this morning, it was absolutely brilliant, and I read one of the articles that John had pointed out. Okay. But now that has been taken off one hour before we made the video, started to make it. That was how Adolf Hitler became ultra popular in Germany because he was fighting against the Rothschild Mafia. Mm. And I've told you, I've told you the stories that Greg Hallett has published, yeah, how to take over the world. That is running the brothels in Germany. That is Salon Kitty. That is underage children being sent into Germany who could speak English eh, and what they're there to do is to entertain the soldiers in Germany so that they can become double agents and send the secrets back. So that is Salon Kitty and if you look it up really quickly this afternoon you might find it. If you leave it like I left this you will not find John Patterson's books recommended on there even although John Patterson is securely locked in a jail. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's the other topics that he's published. Satanic Zionist Jews, Mossad, that is the agents for Jerusalem that actually work in Eastern Europe. Yeah, yeah. That is Mossad in Jerusalem and the Mossad agents that go into America all over uh, Europe and their main role is to assassinate people like you and me. Mm. And do you think John Patterson's been locked away because he's going public with so much or, or, um, or do you think it's something that I still believe that he's a, he's a know-nothing and that is why he and Phil McConnell continued to make videos. Uh, I don't know whether or not he profits from it but his knowledge uh, is well worth sharing uh, and every video I've ever made with him, he's been stunned with the news that comes from me. But he always refers to Katie Bourne uh, and the things that you talked about earlier on that are the money laundering scams in uh, Finchley Road. The, that is nothing compared to my videos on the military industrial complexes that run the whole of Europe, that run the Americas, North and South. Uh, and the the families that we're talking about that were in the uh, Grosvenor family tree, they were Argentinian polo players. 
So, would you would you say that um, Finchley Road and all that goes with it? Um, is just a distraction then from bigger front. Well, front. that is how all of us that become journalists get introduced to the concept because you cannot dive in deeply with jargon that people do not understand. But John, because his MP was Katie Bourne, used to every interview you make, he would chip, chip in with something from her story. Uh, and that is... That is the families that his constituency, the boss was a man called Soames, and, and that is the cousins of Winston Churchill, the nephew of. That is Orcafat Soames, and he with Baronet Blackstone, they scammed the whole of the Channel Tunnel project. She works in the Admiralty buildings in Greenwich. Twice she's refused me a job, and she is a millionaire from the Channel Tunnel scams. And all of it is Winston Churchill's family, and that is Churchill that was the sire of Bill Clinton, uh, Princess Margaret, and a woman called Queen Elizabeth II. And let me now show you the uh, oil scam for them. Okay. Uh, and I might be able to find on the same review uh, the stuff on the massive presence that is uh, the Jewish nations in mm -hmm. England and all over the world as spies and intel and as uh, people that torture their uh, victims. And the biggest thing that Greg Hallett reported is that everybody that conquers another nation in a war and has a colony, that nation then pays the taxes for the empire creators that is the Queen of England. Yeah. Yeah, that is the that is the five hundred years to a thousand years of tax payments before you can be free to be a democracy again. It's totally crooked. Yeah. No, it is, it is. <sighs> It's quite depressing as well when you think about these few families ruling the second world. Yeah. So there's where we left off in the last video. And remember how uh, globally we are owned by private individuals named Rothschild, Trump, Trump Heller, Roddenroth, Rockefeller, Lehman, Clinton, Hines, most of whom descend from John of Gaunt. So let me now take you further down and find you the religious stuff and the names of the troops in Israel that are the Druze that are founded in ancient uh, Macedonia and places like that that are okay. based on the Piso family from start to finish. Okay, let's go for it. So there is the picture of David Pepper and the nerve gas sarin. That is Boris Johnson in my review of why the world's gone fascist. Katerina Pfeiffer, Schweggers, those are the Cheggers families that we talked about. Uh, Keith Chegwin. Yeah, Cheggers guys pop and all that. First, the plot to take over the world starts in Germany, where Queenie, Queenie, QE2 descends from. In 1714, George I of Hanover took over the English throne. Queen Anne chose to live that, that is her tactically avoiding her execution because she is a Catholic. So she chose to be a Protestant so she could live. Converted nice. to Protestantism, even though over 50 of her bloodline were closer to the Stuart, Mary Queen of Scots lop their heads off Tudors, that becomes pan-European, Protestant, Episcopalian, Lutheran, Aryan monarchs only. Yeah, that is that is the 